Hello there, welcome to another week in our garden. Very, very hot this week. It's best thing to do when it's hot is go and sit in the shade. Don't get yourselves out in the too much sun in the garden. You can always do it in the evening. So, and I'm going to tie up some of the squashes that are growing on the frame. And I'm going to put some of the squashes to start the circles. If you remember, I'm going to grow them into circles. So we'll do that while it's nice and hot. Okay. Here's this one. This is the tallest one we've got. There are fruit showing on it already, but the, these will latch on. But I just need to tie a support in there and again to take the weight. So it's just a normal look. Twice around the and then put a knot, same as we did with the tomatoes. There you are, you see, then that's not going to slip. And then we just put it round here, just to support it in. Not too tight, and I always do a bow, because I can always come back and loosen it or tighten it as the need be, okay? So, that's fine. There's another one here. I have put one tie on it, so I'm going to put another tie on it up there. I need it to go in and out of the frame as it grows, so I'll tie it on the other side, this one. The potatoes were falling onto these and overcrowding them a bit, so I've just put a piece of timber in there just to hold them back. It makes water in a nightmare when we're trying to water them. I'm using jute string because it'll rot off by the end of the season, it'll be easier to take off. So I'll do this little one here to give it a start. But And just pop it down there and back nice and even look. There you go. And now we just lift it and just give it a start. I haven't really given this enough to make a bow so it has to have two knots. Let's have to do that one. We we'll just tie this one into just tidy it up. I'm sure I've got enough string. Yes, that'll do. It's actually Golden Hubbard. It says on the ticket. We tried the. A little test on the new potatoes last night. They're not quite ready yet. We'll probably lift them towards the end of the week and get a boiling or two out of them. Looking forward to those. So there you are. I'll just tie the rest on. There's about four more to tie on and then we'll show you them done and then we'll move on to those circles. I've tied them in a little bit loose but it's only enough to start them off onto the frame and then we'll tie them up as they go up and across. The other side I've done just the same. Because they need quite a bit of water, I have to bring cans of water down here every night. So they're not getting an awful lot of it. They get enough to survive. So if you have some good rainstorms, they'll do remarkably well within days. Now we'll have a look at putting some circles into these big pumpkins and see what we can do. I'm going to put these canes in the plants where the roots are so I know where to water 
It's no good watering the whole lot, just water the root system then. So there's the root, so I know now that that area is where I need to put the water. I'll do this on the mower. Right, I'm going to use this wire, it's only soft wire, but I'm not going to pin them down tight, I'm just going to pin them loose so the plant can move about inside. And I do it in a rough circle. I think some will be ovals more than circles, but we'll see how we go. So we're coming away from the root now. So you can see, we're going to do it in a circle as big as we can. Then any fruits that form, we'll try and put out on the outside of the circle or the inside of the circle on some straw or something to keep them clean. So we've come away from the root, now we need to turn. So we're going to go that way. So I'll just lightly... There's a stone there, but we don't want stone. Just lightly pin them, can you see that? It's not a tight pin at all, there's plenty of movement in there. So I'll pin this one now. Galvanised wire so it won't go rusty but don't bend it too much as you break the galvanise off and then it will go rusty. So this one I just turn that over and we're going to send it on its way round the circle lot. Nice and loose again, I'm not going to pin them tight. So that one's now on its way to go round and then the fruit will be either in or out of the circle. Now this one we have two running on it, but we'll do the same. It's a bit close to that one, but it'll be all right. So we'll just loosely pin this one down. Now, if it'll go, it's probably it in the stone. That'll hold it in place, and then we'll start it on its way round, and then likewise with that one. You just take this one round, look, and we'll start the circle. The idea is, when it gets full circle, we can just lift that up as it comes by again and pin it with the same pin. We're actually doing this to save some room. So although the circles look a little small, a lot of plants in a small area, so we'll save quite a bit of room doing it this way. So if you imagine this is going to come round like that, say so, let's pin it here just to hold it and then we'll turn this to go that way. Turn them gently, if you turn them hard they'll snap. But if we turn it too hard and we snap it here, we have to wait for another leader to come to take it round, so just be careful. So there you go, look, we'll start it on its way. We don't want to pin that leaf, so we we'll move the leaf. I think I'm hitting stones. There you go, it's on its way. I shall finish this off, I'll go and cut some more wire, I didn't think I'd need that many. I'll cut some more wire, bring them down, get all the circles going, and then we'll come down each week, and I shall keep doing it daily when I'm bringing them a can of water. Keep pinning them until we've got the full circles going. And it'll be quite interesting to see. Now, I think we've got a yet up there that wants cutting off today before it gets to be a marrow so we'll cut that while we're here. As you can see there's a courgette there that it's a little bit on the big side to as we wanted them but I didn't cut it because I knew we was going to film today so I left it one night and it's got huge. If I left it again I'm afraid it'd be a marrow. So we'll cut it off with the knife, follow it to the end and just take it through. Be very very careful because if you cut too hard you'll cut into the main plant and that will could cause some disease to get in then and then we'll have a, a bit of a mess. They'll kill the plant. Now as you can see there's plenty more coming on this one. They don't want to be a lot bigger than that one now. We'll probably take that one tomorrow. But I said that with this one now look what I've got. Just walking past the apple tree so we thought we'd just mention that it's June. Now in June the apple tree if it's well loaded with fruit will drop some of its excess fruit onto the floor. It's called the June drop. It's perfectly natural. Now this year we had the late frost so we haven't got a lot of fruit on 
So looking underneath the tree, there's no June drop this year. There's quite a few apples on it, not as many as last year, but they're nice and clean. The grease bands have done the job. There's no cutting moth on them, so they're good. Yes, the apples look very good, what few we have. Now we're going up to the fruit cage because there's a massive strawberry crop to pick. This year, because of the warm weather, everybody's strawberries are coming at once. Normally I'd like them over a period of time with a little bit cooler weather, but this year it's hot. We've got loads and loads of strawberries. We actually picked two evenings ago and we got a, a 10 pound pick of just strawberries but there'll be another big pick today I'm sure and there's the rest of the red currants to pick because the black currants are also chasing as well so let's go and pick some crops now just while we're on the way to the fruit cage I just thought I'd tell you that the rest of the onions these are the overwintered Japanese onions the rest of them now I will harvest and I'll put them to dry and then I'll prepare this little border down here and I'm going to put the Swedes in it'll take the Swedes it's well prepared land for the onions so it'll take Swedes quite easily this one so that's my job that's probably when it gets a bit cooler but it will be done I will harvest them right as we are here on bed B, the main crop potato bed. We've found on Amazon a new spray that is for potato blight, but it's for the prevention of potato blight. It won't cure potato blight. Here's the spray. It's a, a 500 mil. I think it costs about 18 pounds and you need 40 mil to 20 litres of water so it goes quite a way but it took me 20 litres to spray this crop as you can see on it it says a non-chemical concentrate to help prevent help the prevention of blight in potatoes and tomatoes again this is 100% natural product with no chemicals and it's safe to use in your garden. It's actually supplied by a potato merchant, so let's hope these guys know, know more than us about these sprays. Hopefully this will last my, me a season. I was just, it says we spray once a week, so I sprayed yesterday, so I will spray again next Tuesday. If we get blight weather, which is actually called Smith weather, but they don't predict it no more, so if it comes, we'll give an extra spray so we'll do this this season we will report to you on how we get on with it and how the potatoes are doing and how the weather the biggest test will be when we get the blight weather or the smith weather it is called and then we'll see if it's been working or not right we've been picking some strawberries and some red currants we're about a third of the way through the bed but it's getting that hot and that close now we're going to pack up and I'll come back this evening and pick as you can see this is about a third of what we've picked so that's about it with the red currants on this that was like one bush so we four more bushes to do but they're not quite as far on leave the crop now and come back later on we'll take these up to the house and cool them down take the heat of the day out of them i think it's that sort of heat when you know a storm is about to happen hopefully it's going to rain so we're going in now and we'll we'll see you later hello there lovely today because in the night we had some really good storms so we had quite a bit of rain so it's done the garden a world of good and me because I didn't have to come down watering after the night. Now we have a few broccolis that are coming up ready so we decided we're going to harvest two of them for the weekend. There's one of them we'll take that and the other one's a little further up that we'll take.
There you are, a couple of broccoli heads for the weekend. This one's fine. This one's been in the sun a little, as you can see, it's brought it on a bit, but that's fine, they'll still be all right like that. Now, if you've got the room, obviously we haven't got the room because ours are in the tunnel and we need the room, so we're quite intensive growing them in the tunnel. You could leave the plant and you'll get side shoots, more spears if you like, coming up. Not a lot, but enough to harvest. That's if you've got the room. Obviously we're intensive, so we need the room for other plants. Now, as you can see, everything's doing rather well in the tunnel. There's broccoli all down that side. So we must have, I think about five or six plants still to harvest as they come up. I don't like to leave it exposed like this. I need to get this cover straight back on. So that's the, the mesh back onto the cabbage. I don't like to keep it exposed too long in case there's any butterflies about. Now we'll go up to the shed and have a little bit of uh, pricking out to do with some winter cauliflowers. So we'll get those. Here we are at the table frame, as we like to call it now. This is the cauliflower winter three. This would be for spring. I've done savoy cabbage now I'm doing cauliflower triumph these will be first and then those will be later for the spring the cauliflower triumph that would be more of an autumn cauliflower and the winter three will take us right through Christmas and into next year I've done another batch of lettuce 20 little gem and also I've done 20 30 green cos, they're the taller ones but the little gems will, the, will mature very quickly and then those will follow. I will do one more set to take us through again as soon as these start to mature a little bit more I'll reset to keep them going right through the summer. Over here I've done the Swedes, I've done them in cells because the the ground wasn't ready where the overwintered Japanese onions are. They'll be lifted this week. I'll prepare the ground and just whip those in quick and see if we can plant them a little bit deeper than what they are and bring them on a bit. I'm now I'm going to prick out the cauliflower triumph. You see they're doing quite well. We had some good rain last night so they're, they're well wet. As you can see, excellent plants. Now when you're doing any brassicas remember, I'll just do one row to show you because I do believe it's going to rain. Put them in quite well and then really firm them down. They do like to be firmed in. Again, we can be we only want 30 so we can be a bit selective on what we're using. So again, well down and then tighten up. Two more. Well down and then nice and tight. And one more. And then tighten it down. Then when I finished I'll move the label across. There we are, that's the cauliflower, autumn cauliflower called Triumph done. I, n I have put them into pots not cells because the the mesh tunnels are still plenty full i'll wait until they've thinned out a little bit and then made more room for these to go in so they're perfectly all right in these and i've kept them just on my bench which uh, i just mentioned the bench it's it's been excellent bench it's a good working height I have no slugs up here, I have no, with using mesh, I have no blackbird problems and with it being this high I have no chicken problems with them. It's a very very good table. Main problem is it's not quite big enough but that was my fault. We'll pop up to the greenhouse. It's amazing how the weather's changed and yesterday 
we had to stop harvesting strawberries because it was just too hot and today it's it's quite chilly and windy but that's British summer isn't it I've covered the the table up with the mess just to keep the birds off I've also cut a couple of the cos lettuce very nice and um, we'll take this up with us we'll go to the greenhouse now and we'll see how we're getting on there right we're in the greenhouse now and we'll just show you how the plants are coming on um, I see we've got to harvest a cucumber or two but first of all I just want to show you how the tomatoes getting on that we grafted now of all the tomatoes in the greenhouse it is the one that's doing the best the graft is still doing well at the bottom as you can see and it's actually if you can just move the producing some fruit now and they're colouring up nicely but we've got six trusses on our tomato that we grafted I think that's enough because it's nearly at the top glass so now I will stop this tomato it's quite simple all you do is just reach up and take the top out all the energy now will be coming up the stem and finding nowhere to go it'll have to go into the fruit etc so that besides shoots and all sorts really trying to get going now so I'll have to keep my eye on it and sometimes once you stop them you'll get leaves coming out the end of the flowers here so we just keep an eye on that and we'll just take those off the rest of the tomatoes are doing quite well I do go around in the morning and side shoot them but I see this one there's always one you miss so they're all tomatoing well the trusses on this particular one are huge if you can see that that's all one truss it's a huge amount of tomatoes will get on if they all come they might just drop the end flowers off once they've got tomatoes on doing rather well nothing special I feed them once a week and I water them twice a day I always try to as best I can is to use rainwater if I can't use rainwater if I'm getting low on rainwater I mix tap water and rainwater 50-50 and try to water them with those. Now we'll harvest the cucumber because I see the cranes arrive now to help me lift it. And there you are. That's a nice cucumber. All right, it's not straight, but it's straightish. But I nearly needed a crane. There is another one, so I'll just pass this to Diane and get the other one. There's the other one, it's a little bit straight, there's a little bit of mark on it where it's rubbed on the stem, but that's good. There you are, there's a, a couple of cucumbers, there's loads more. In fact, there's one that is as good as ready at the bottom. I'm taking it up and then I'm going to take it along this cane so it keeps fruiting along the top. So, a quick word about the peppers not quite big enough yet to put the string on when they get a bit bigger i'll put the string loosely round tie it to each corner and then it'll hold the plant from falling over right we just want to nip across the yard in front of the greenhouse we're going to tie up and sort out one of those standard fuchsias so you know how to do it okay this is one of the standard fuchsias that we're growing we've still got to nine more there to do but I'll do one with you and then I'll do the other ones as the day goes on now what we need to do to turn it into a proper standard now I need to remove this cane and put a thicker cane in to take the weight so what I'm going to do with my secateurs is just cut those tapes off you have to be careful you don't cut the plant while you're doing it, but it's quite... 
It doesn't matter if you cut one or two of the leaves off now. There's a clip on there. Isn't it? So, one more, I think, at the top. Yes, one more. Right, that's those all. Make sure you get all these tapes that nuisance to get everywhere in the garden. Right, so now we remove that cane, and this we have to be a bit careful, so don't let it go. And we'll put the thicker, stronger cane in. Move this slightly out of the way and put your cane in straight, and then bring it back to it. Just before we use the taping machine to tape it to there, I'm going to take all this off, the leaves, the side shoots, everything off. Okay? Just clean them too. You'll have to do this several times because they will keep trying to put a shoot out until the top starts demanding all the sap. We'll just take those off. Right up to the where the main break is. There you go. Now we can bring that together. Still supporting it. Don't let it go now. And then round the plant and then put it tight but not too tight. This this stuff we use in the, the ribbon does give a bit anyway. Now I'm going to try and get right up into the top as well to stop the top breaking as the weight comes on the top. Okay. Just as best you can. There you go. That's supported nicely now. Just need to sort the top out now. It's doing well as it is but if you left it like that these will keep growing so we need to to nip out to get the brakes so first thing you do is take your flowers off i don't know what type it is i forget all the names now but it's quite pretty it'll look nice when it's got a a nice head on it it won't take every flower off it's impossible just take the ones that you can see or that are breaking Right, here we are. I'll do this with the second tier so I get a clean cut. So there it comes, break out. So what we'll do, we'll follow it up and go to the next break and then we'll take that off. We'll follow this up. We'll go to this break here, take that off and here. This one's a bit of a road down here, but what we'll do We'll give it a break there, and that one will match it up there. Same again. Take this down, off, take that up, first joint, carefully take them off, try not to damage the, the shoots that are growing. And then we'll do the next, the next break here, same again. Just take that off. You can see this one's coming up here. We'll let that one go a bit, then take it off up there. Likewise, that one, that one. So we'll do the opposite to what we did that one. And we'll keep working our way round now. But we'll now we're getting tight. We'll just do it on the first break. You see here, not there. And first break again. So these have been left outside, they're not being kept in the greenhouse, so they're making steady growth. If you put them in the greenhouse, you get too much soft growth. I don't know if you can see the top, there's a pear break in there, there's a pear break in there. I'm going to take it off at that. And there you go. That is going to make one fine standard. If you can see it's tending to go that way at the moment because they've now been stopped these will come out and then we'll do the same again to make a nice round head. I shall give them some feed not too high in potassium just yet we don't want too many flowers so I'll give it a, a probably a, 
a nitrogen rich feed so we get more growth on the top. I shall work my way through all of them. Some will be quite a time yet before they're up and ready but these are doing fine look. That one's Winton Churchill, it's a fine plant. But they all need doing now, I shall go through them as I get a bit of time. I'm a bit busy down the bottom at the moment but I will do these perhaps one evening. They all really want doing now, we're getting ahead and we need to, I'll get them all done. Here we are in the courtyard. As you can see the impatient balls are doing rather well. They took quite a bashing from the heavy rain yesterday but they survived. The produce we just picked is looking very good although the cucumbers are making my arm ache. Friday today, been rather busy this morning, we've raised quite a few plants and sent them down to the village garden paint to help raise some funds for the village. It's getting very very overcast now, I hope it rains. I know some people don't want the rain but I want the rain. It's Friday today as I said so that'll be it for this week. We've made 3,000 subscribers, thank you very much to all of you. It's very much appreciated, we do like that. And hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye now.